Good day, everyone. Ali Safi here from Safi Financial Network. Today is July 5th, 2024. Here is another weekly edition. Today is very special day just because this is July 5 and it is my birthday. All right, so let's get into the chart and see what chart tells us. Hope this video is going to be a specific analysis for you and it's going to be kind of like a gift uh, I try my best to give you a gift for my birthday, to give you a best analysis I can have. All right, so here is a S&P 500 weekly chart. As we expect, that market just uh, carved up nicely to the area that we were waiting for a topping formation. So this is the area. Let me just uh, bring this here. So this is the area that we were waiting for. Right now, we are kind of like a waiting for a topping formation. Still looking for a kind of like a topping formation form. We don't see any sign of the topping formation, but based on my cycle, July is going to be very, very important top for the market. And we can just get back to kind of like a correction. Getting back to the upside potentially in first uh, two, three weeks of August, but make kind of like a double top at the best case scenario or a lower high and then getting back to a sell-off for October, September, just prior election. And we can get back all the way down to 4,800, 4,900. So still it's going to be early for that scenario, but I believe that this first step is about to form. So if you are at July 5th, let's say to July 17 to 19, we can see the market getting into the topping phase. And after that, we can see a sell-off coming afterwards. Moving on to daily chart. So here's the daily and the daily chart. And we just got into 5560. So 5560, as I promised, we just headed here. So uh, to, uh, I believe that uh, just the last week, I posted video S&P 500, uh, 55. 60 is coming. So make sure to watch that video because right on, we are at 55, 60 today. Just stretching uh, some points above it, but uh, market just rejected nicely. We close at 55, 60 right now. We still can have a like a momentum to the upside. I believe that this is the area based on the daily chart, July 5th to July 21st. Then we can see a downside move coming as well. So the sharp sell-off can uh, can initiate at any time soon uh, in, within the next two weeks. So we should just wait for that reversal to happen. Moving on to NASDAQ, a uh, weekly chart. Let me just uh, bring the weekly chart here. All right, so here's the NASDAQ weekly chart. We're just nicely slicing through this 20,000, 20,357. Uh, still, we can get into 20,800, 700, 800, but I believe that that's going to be the upside target, at least at this stage. And again, uh, we can see some kind of like a pullback, a sharp pullback is happening to the downside. So next week, I should say, is going to be very, very important week. And I'm kind of like a scaling out lots of positions next week. Moving on to daily chart. So here's the daily chart. Uh, we just uh, got into this uh, first box here. Still, there is going to be a potential scenario to stretch it higher, as I said, to 20,800 uh, maximum. And then we can see a rollover. And this rollover is going to be a sharp, is going to be a significant. And I'm just uh, expecting this one is getting to 18,000-ish. So that's going to be the scenario that I'm just looking at. And uh, we should see some kind of like a volatility here as well. Moving on to US 30, which is Dow. Dow is lagging. Dow didn't form a bullish momentum here. Lots of chop here, uh, even weekly chart. You can see that Dow Jones uh, signaling kind of like a bullish momentum, but, uh, but it is weak. It is lagging compared to the other indexes, especially NASDAQ. And that's kind of like the warning sign as well because Dow doesn't follow. So Dow should be follower, but it's very lagging. So this is kind of like the warning signal for, for everyone, especially Russell 2000 as well. So Dow and Russell do not follow S&P 500 and NASDAQ, which is weird. Feel a bullish consolidation in daily chart. But this bullish consolidation, lots of chops here, buyers uh, taking position here, sellers taking position. 
breakout could happen anytime soon and it can just initiate in lots of healthcare names. I believe that they just sold off sharply today uh, and they can go back up again uh, next week. Moving on to gold, which was nicely going higher today. Gold is getting into kind of like an overstretched overbought in a daily chart, but this trend broken. So whenever this trend is broken and we got kind of like above this previous high, this means a pullback it could be kind of like good buying opportunity to 2490. So 2490, 2500 is going to be the area that I'm just looking for a gold top here. Um, moving on to silver, which I believe is going to outperform better. Fantastic move today for silver. So look at that. The silver break out nicely and it goes above this pivot. Why this pivot is important? Because this one initiate the last low and we are kind of like a demand area forming at the right tri a trend line and getting above this important um, pivot as well. Any pullback could be a great buying opportunity. 32.50 and even 34 is coming down the road at July 7th to July 21st. That's gonna be the topping cycle as well for silver. Moving on to crude, uh, which kind of like a forming the topping formation here, if you ask me. Crude topped here, so we can see some kind of like a pullback for crude. If it gets uh, below $80, I should say the sharp sell off is coming down the road and it can go all the way down to 65 as well. Um, let me just uh, go to individual names. Moving on to Bitcoin, Bitcoin just after yesterday drop, yesterday dropped very sharply and it's give a scare to everyone. But this is very, very long shadow bottoming tail. So it's, it's very, very tricky. Still, we can make a bullish case of Bitcoin, but this is not my favorite. I believe we need to see more action from Bitcoin because Bitcoin is getting pretty close to this demand area. And you see that a lot of institution money is locating here. So this is very, very important level, folks. Um, if Bitcoin recaptured this pivot, going back up, any pullback would be a fantastic buying opportunity for Bitcoin. If it doesn't hold and getting bounce, bounce, and then forming kind of like a sharp sell-off after that, we need to see Bitcoin 48 to 52 for make a decision. If you see a reversal here, we can just buy. Right now, my strategy is if you want to be a buyer for Bitcoin, if you think that Bitcoin is a buy, you can put your stop loss here, but you may buy it later here. Right now, there is going to be a good spot. If you want to be aggressively buyer, so that's what I'm saying. You can put your stop loss here. And there is going to be a first profit here. The second profit is going to be here. And you can just uh, leave the rest for the breakout. But if Bitcoin doesn't help us, if Bitcoin gets back to its bearish momentum to the downside, I would rather to wait and get on board within this important demand area. Right now, this demand area worked perfectly. So this shadow is because of this, because a lot of monies are located here. And this is the way how supply and demand works. So right now we will give market benefit of doubt for bullish momentum, but we need to see a follow through. So if you see a follow through, a pullback could be a great buying opportunity, stop loss with below this shadow here. The same as Ethereum. So if you go to Ethereum chart, you will see the same thing here. So it's kind of like a double bottom here, but Ethereum, the bottoming tail needs to get above this for confirmation. So we need to see Ethereum getting back above 3150. So if Ethereum gets back above 3150, any pullback, we can just put our stop loss here for a buy and potentially break out for a very, very good buying opportunity. So everything just coming at the at the same uh, analysis before but right now we are seeing some development of bottoming structure bond yield 
crash to the downside. So bond yield after this bearish consolidation here. Today, after NFP, NFP was very low, uh, lower than expectation, and also uh, lower than before. So NFP goes down. And uh, right now, everyone just uh, keep an eye on Federal Reserve meeting in July. And potentially, they're going to just announce the, the rate cut. I don't think they're going to re do rate cut this month. But they're going to just uh, give market more dollish verbiage for September and also December rate cut. So market believe that if Federal Reserve wants to do the rate cut, it's going to be one in September. The next one is going to be in December. So uh, bond yield is showing us a weaker dollar is coming down the road. And that's why uh, TLT goes up again today after sharp sell off last week. We're just getting back to this bullish momentum. VIX is upticking today. Uh, while market was positive, VIX is upticking. So this is kind of like a strong uh, indicator that VIX formed the bottom here and it can go higher. Dixie is down following the bond yield. If Dixie goes below 104, I believe the sharp decline is coming to 101 to 102. So all in all, I see that the weaker dollar is coming down the road. Precious metals can um, can kind of like a, a be beneficiary of this a fall off for the dollar and they can just move higher. Stock market, short-term bullish, as I said, for the first and uh, within next two weeks, but eventually they're gonna go down as well. Magma indicator, moving, sparking to the new all-time high, just because Meta and Apple today just sparking to new all-time high. Uh, Apple just uh, moving higher, 226. This is fantastic for Apple. Nice surge to the upside. Amazon just 1% uh, to the upside, 200 level for Amazon fixed. This is a very, very nice scenario. Meta 5% to the upside, new all-time high for Meta. This is great. Microsoft dollar, um, $6.79, new all-time high. All big techies are at new all-time high. Google, nice surge to the upside, new all-time high as well. So when I see this, I should say the last phase of rally is just forming and the top information is forming as well. So um, Netflix, just a shadow on the top, um, double top here, still bullish consolidation. Tesla, another 2% upside, fantastic rocketing to the upside. Tesla can go 250 to 260. As I said, 251, there you go. So Tesla just to manage it above 250 this week. And this is kind of like a good news for bulls. Moving on to semiconductor, which we're lagging. So this is kind of like the warning for the market. Semis lagging, socks lagging as well. Taiwan Semiconductor just to hit double top here, Doji Bar. AMD sparking higher today. Nicely forming a small bullish, not a small, kind of like the pole is a small, but the pattern is good and decent. So you should just see AMD is getting back to 183, maximum 194. And then we can see kind of like the top as well for AMD. Uh, NVIDIA coming down today. Can you believe that? With today market sentiment, NVIDIA is getting down. If you can't remember, I was talking about NVIDIA can go to this level, which is still, I'm kind of like a, um, seeing this chart that NVIDIA can sharply going down, especially when market goes down as well. So we will see Texas Instruments uh, after Doji Bar coming down as well, 15 cents. Lamb Research actually is sparking higher today, $5.06 gain. Moving on to banks, the financials, XLF at one cents down today. KB is 65 cents down. Still choppy here, bond yield is down. So uh, financials uh, are down as well today. KR is 71 cents down. JP Morgan, sharp sell off, uh, $3.90 uh, down. Goldman Sachs, uh, $3.00. 17 cents down. Bank of America, 49 cents down as well. Wells Fargo, dollar four cents down. All in all, financials are lagging and they are weak. So that's why Dow Jones are coming down. Gold miners, they are perfectly going up nicely. So as I said, gold miners can be outperformer, uh, especially in this period. GDX at 2.81%, 99 cents to the upside. GDX trade, dollar 14 cents upside. AEM, dollar 75 cents up. Newmont, dollar 6 cents up. Fantastic move for 
Newmont, Franco, Nevada, just the lagging here, uh, $1. seven cents up. And gold barrack, 14 cents up, but candle is not that strong. So candle is just shooting a star. I believe that it can go back up again. Moving on to XLE, which is financials, uh, sorry, Spider Energy. Going down today, I believe that they're rolling over with crude XLE down. XOP is down at $3.70 down. OH at $5.10 down. And Exxon here, dollar thirty nine cents down, and Chevron two dollar forty cents down here. So I believe that they are just heading to lower low uh, anytime uh, when a crude is forming the top. I believe that they are going down as well. So still, I can see lots of lower lows with energy stocks these days. All right, guys, uh, I believe I covered everything here. If you like this video, please smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and share it with your friends or relatives who are interested in this type of analysis. Have a fantastic weekend. See you on the chart. Bye-bye.